Before we dive into building anything, it's a good idea to get familiar and comfortable with the Framer interface. From a bird's eye view, you can think of this as being made up into four main parts. The toolbar across the top, the left sidebar, which can display several different panels, the right sidebar, which will show the properties panel the vast majority of the time, and the canvas in the middle. Let's unpack each of these main parts, starting with the toolbar. Furthest to the left, we have a button with a little framer logo. This opens the main menu where you'll find a ton of actions and preferences. For all intents and purposes, this is the menu bar you'd find across the top of the screen on a Mac or across the top of a window on a Windows PC. A lot of these things can be accessed other ways, so a lot of the time we won't even need to reach for it, but it's a good time to take a moment to familiarize yourself with what's here. Next, we have a few buttons that allow us to insert elements into our project, starting with a button to open the insert panel, which is packed with pages, page sections, design elements, and components to build some super dynamic functionality into your site without writing a single line of code. Pressing I on the keyboard will bring you directly here, so that's a great keyboard shortcut to commit to memory early on. And for the most fundamental building blocks, we can use the layout menu and the text button to add basic elements to the canvas. Then we have the CMS button, which takes us into a whole other view to create and manage collections and items for the built-in content management system. But we'll dig into that in another course. The last item on this side of the toolbar is a huge time saver, the quick action bar, which you can pull up at any time by pressing Command K on a Mac or Control K on a PC. Then start typing the name of a menu item without having to dig around for it. The Quick Actions menu is also a great place to learn keyboard shortcuts for actions you find yourself doing repeatedly. In the middle of the toolbar, you'll find the name of the project you have open, and you can click to rename it or move it to a different folder. And if this site has been published, beside the name of the project, you'll find the URL, which you can click to quickly open the live site in your default browser. Then on the right-hand side, you'll find avatars for any collaborators in the project, localization to customize your site for different languages and regions, settings to access a variety of settings for your site and its pages, preview mode to get a look at how things will look and behave in a browser, invite where you can bring in collaborators to design, manage content, and publish changes, and finally, the publish button where we can take our site live or publish changes with a click. Next, we have the left sidebar where you can toggle between three important panels. Pages, where we can view, create, and edit the pages of our site. Layers, which show all of the elements on the current page, along with a handy little page switcher at the top. And finally, the Assets panel, where you'll find the components, styles, and code files within your project. Next, we have the Right sidebar, which is where the properties of the selected element will show up. This Properties panel is contextual, which means it will show the properties that are relevant to what's selected at the moment. For example, selecting a breakpoint shows only what's relevant to a breakpoint, whereas selecting a text box shows things like font family, weight, spacing, and alignment, which weren't there a moment ago. Last but not least, the whole middle of the screen is the canvas where the magic happens. Everything we design happens here on an infinite freeform canvas that feels just like the design tools we know and love. The content of our web pages will be within these top level frames called breakpoints, but we'll dig into the anatomy of a project in the next lesson. Here at the bottom, we also have some helpful canvas tools. You'll find the pan tool, which you can also switch to by holding the spacebar, the comment tool to click and add comments anywhere on the canvas, as well as view and reply to all of the comments in the project on the right sidebar. Then we have a toggle for day and night mode, which not only changes the framer interface, but will also toggle the content of your site once that's been set up. We'll get to that. And some zoom controls with shortcuts that make navigating the canvas a whole heck of a lot quicker and easier. You'll see me using the shortcuts for zoom to fit and zoom to selection all the time, along with zoom to 100% to be sure I don't lose track of the true scale of things. It's very possible you're watching this directly on Framer Academy. But if not, be sure to head to framer.com slash academy to see our growing library of lessons like this one. 
Also be sure to join the conversation on framer.community where we all come together to help each other out. That's it for this one. See you in the next one.